Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. It is the truth. We do receive it written in our heart and mind. We thank you for the revelation of it. We will be hearers and doers of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We've been sharing with you on the subject of our members, how important it is to yield our members unto God. We've talked about the fact that we need to watch what we hear, what we see, what we think upon, what we speak, and we are talking about our walk. We've talked about the importance of the steps of our feet and the importance of our walk from the Old Testament. We're going to review a few scriptures from the Old Testament that we looked at. And then we're going to be talking about scriptures in the New Testament about our walk because our walk is extremely important. We walk, we go step by step, but your walk is the overall picture of whether you are following the way of the Lord or not. It shows your track record, your consistent walk in your life. And it will be step by step. We see in Psalms 84, verse 11, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good, good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. God does not hold any good thing from those who will walk uprightly. If you and I will walk uprightly, we will see God's good things, his blessings come upon us in our life. This way that we walk, though, it is a way of holiness. We cannot think that we're going to see God's blessings come in our life if we are not walking the way of holiness. In Isaiah chapter 35, in verse 8, it says, A highway shall be there and a way, the way that for you and I to walk, and it shall be called the way of holiness. It's a way of holiness. Notice, the unclean shall not pass over it. That's why God wants us to be sure that we've confessed our sins, receive forgiveness, cleansing from all unrighteousness, and get cleansed from everything that's not of Him. We can't have uncleanness and think we're going to walk in this way. It shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools, shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up there up there upon. That all is a type of the lions, a type of the enemy. And the ravenous beast, a type again, the enemy, evil spirits, we're going to cast them all out and we're going to get set free from their bondages. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. Who's going to walk this way? The ones who've been redeemed, you and I have been redeemed. We have been purchased. We have been liberated and brought out of bondage, restored to relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And the ransomed, or the redeemed, the same one, of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. Why is that? Because they've gained victory. They've conquered the enemy. They've overcome all sin and all uncleanness and cast out all the demons. And they're walking in victory in their life. And they shall obtain joy and gladness. And sorrow and sign shall flee away. No more sign, no more sorrow. God wants that out of our life. He wants us to have his joy his gladness, his victory, his promises being manifest in our life. And that's what he will do for each of us. As we are walking this walk, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 says, They that wait upon the Lord. The word wait upon the Lord is not like we're waiting around to see if God's going to do something. No, it is a word which actually means to hope and expect, to wait for eagerly or to have an expectant hope. Otherwise, we'll have a confident expectancy knowing that he's going to accomplish things for us in our life. Those that await upon the Lord with this confident expectancy are going to renew their strength. You'll be strengthened continually because your eyes are upon him, your eyes are upon the word. And you'll mount up with wings as eagles. What do the eagles do? They fly above the storms. They don't get caught in a storm. They get above the storm. They, they overcome. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's what you and I are going to do. We're going to run the race. We're not going to get weary. We're going to walk this walk. We're not going to faint and draw back. We're going to walk the walk of the Lord and follow him all the days of our life. Another scripture that we looked at that's important for us to take note of is that when we walk this walk, we cannot walk after our own thoughts. We must put the word of God first place in our life. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 2, he says, I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. What made them rebellious? Which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. 
if we walk after our own thoughts, doing whatever I want to do, not considering what the Word says, then we're actually considered rebellious. God does not want us to walk in those ways. He wants us to walk in being yielded to Him, obedient to Him, following the way of the Lord. Also, another thing, as you are walking the way of the Lord, you must understand that it's possible for you to go backwards. Some people think, well, I didn't think I could go backwards. I thought I was always going forwards. Not necessarily. Jeremiah 7, 23, he says, This thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. As we're obedient, we're following him. And walk in all the ways that I've commanded you, that it may be well unto you. God wants good things to happen. We'll be blessed. We'll be well. We'll be prospered. We'll be healed, delivered. Good things will happen for us. But they hearken not. They didn't listen. They didn't obey. Nor incline their ear, but they walked in the counsels and imaginations of their evil heart. They did things that were contrary to the word. And what happened? They went backward and not forward. God doesn't want us ever to go backward. We're going to walk forward as we follow the way of holiness. We follow the way of the word. We put the word of God first place in our life. And we do all the things that God wants us to do. Now, in the New Testament, we see many scriptures we'll see today that show the walk that we are to walk. We begin in Luke chapter 1, and verse 6. And this is speaking here about Zacharias and Elizabeth. And it speaks, it says that they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord, blameless. Notice, they were considered righteous. They weren't born again yet. Nobody was born again at this point. But they were counted righteous, walking in all the commandments. And they were blameless. You and I are to walk in all the commandments, which are the New Testament commandments. And you and I are to walk blameless. And we talked about in the Old Testament how Enoch, walked with the Lord. How Abraham walked with the Lord. He was just told to be walk with the Lord and be perfect. How Noah walked with the Lord. We saw those kings that walked with the Lord and were obedient. These guys weren't even born again. You and I are born again. We now have the Spirit of Christ in us. We receive the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. You and I can walk with the Lord. And we're going to walk with the Lord because now we have the word that gets written in our heart and mind. And we have revelation from the Holy Spirit of his ways. No excuse for us not walking in the way of the Lord. And what are we walking after today? After the New Testament commandments. We're not under the Old Testament. We're under the New Testament commandments now. And you and I are to walk blameless before the Lord. Holy ones that are without spot, without wrinkle, as we do what the word says. The key will be putting the word first place. In fact, in John chapter 8, verse 31, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, that's the condition, and that's what you and I must meet. Continue, abide, remain, walk in his word, this means. Then are you my disciples indeed. The true disciples are the ones who are continuing in his word. If we're not continuing his word, are we a disciple? No. We may be a believer, but not necessarily a disciple. A disciple is a disciplined one who is walking after the ways of the Word of God. And what's going to happen? You'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Because the Word of God in your life, God will bring revelation of the truth as you do it, and you will produce the freedom and liberty and victory in your life. But just because you're a disciple, again, we talked about the fact that it's possible for you to go backwards. That's what happened. John chapter 6 and verse 66 it speaks of those, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. They were disciples at one point, but they turned back. Don't ever turn back. Put the word of God first place. You're going to do what God's word says. You're going to follow him all the days of your life. We're going to continue to be disciples because we are going to continue in his word. And remember, you'll know the truth, <clears throat> and that truth will make you free. Now, as you walk this walk, certainly we cannot be walking in the ways of darkness. John 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. That's Jesus, and he's the word. He that followeth me, the word, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. If we're not following the word, 
then we're following darkness in reality, whether we realize it or not. Because Jesus is the Word, He is the light, and you're going to have the light of life. It'll manifest His life in you. We see over in John chapter 12, over in verse 35, Jesus said to them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. That's the way the world is. The world's just wandering aimlessly, going nowhere in life. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians are doing the same thing because they don't have the word first place. They're walking after the flesh, after their own thoughts. They're not walking in the ways of the Lord, possessing promises, overcoming, seeing God manifest himself, develop a personal relationship with him, and being used of the Lord in the ministry that God has for them. God wants us to walk in his ways. And we're going to walk in his ways as we walk in the light. If we walk in the ways of the Lord, one thing's for sure, we're going to have the fear of God before us. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified, they were built up, strengthened, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort or the encouragement, this refers to, of the Holy Spirit, and were multiplied. That's what God wants. He wants you to walk in the fear of the Lord and in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there to encourage you. He will bring the Word to you. He will show you things, bring revelation to you, always be there to, to help you to walk in the right way. He's the helper that comes to dwell on the inside of us. But we must have the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. If you have the fear of the Lord, you will hate anything that's evil, and you will not walk in any evil ways whatsoever. You will do what is right in the sight of the Lord. God wants us to have the fear of the Lord. By the fear of the Lord, we depart from iniquity. We will turn away from that which is not of Him. And when we have the fear of the Lord, we will see God manifest Himself and bring His blessings in our life. Another thing that's important is when we walk this walk, we are going to walk by faith. And we talked about that recently when we talked about the fruit of faith in the Fruit of the Spirit series. Romans chapter 4, verse 12, speaks about how they were walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham. He walked in the God kind of faith. You and I are to walk by this faith, and is the faith that he operated was the God kind of faith. And remember, the way this faith operates is, you're going to call those things which be not as being. Now, for you here, we're not here, here when we talked about this previously. This says, call those things that be not as though they were. It's a mistake in the translation because the word be is a present participle in the Greek, translated be or being. The word were, you would think, would be a past tense, but instead, it's a present participle as well, translated being. It's the exact same word. Young's literal corrects the error in the King James as it translates this calling the things that be not as being. In other words, you are going to call those things that are not being as being to speak them into being. That's important when you operate in faith. You're going to speak the promises of God into being. You're going to speak all these things into being to release them to come to pass. That's what Jesus did. When he was speaking healing, he would say, be healed. He would say, be loosed. He would say, be opened. He would say, be made whole. He'd speak things into being. You're going to speak to the mountain, be thou removed. You're going to speak authority into being and release it to destroy the works of the enemy. You and I can speak the things of God into being. And that is important when you operate by faith. You're also, against any reason for hope, you're going to believe in hope. Remember hope. We talked about it, about wait upon, over in uh, Isaiah chapter 40. But here's the word in the New Testament, hope. It's the word el peace. And again, it refers to an expectation of good or of hope, a confident expectation, more literally, what it means. Against any confident expectation, he believed in the confident expectation that he might become the father of many nations. What was his basis for being able to believe in this confident expectation? It's because of the fact that he had a, some, a word from God, didn't he? 
That which was spoken, so shall thy seed be, that he would be the father of many nations. When you have a word from the Lord, you have the word of God, which are the promises that are given to us already, then you should always maintain confident expectancy in what God will do. That's hope. And know that he will absolutely bring those promises into being as you put your faith in operation, because faith is the substance of things hoped for. It brings those hopes into being. Also, remember when you're operating by faith, you can't be weak in faith. Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Otherwise, he didn't consider the natural state of things. He considered the Word of God, the promise. You do not consider the natural state of things. You consider what God's promise is, and you speak His Word, use what, what He's told you to do, whether it's using your authority or speaking promises, whatever it might be, a prayer of faith, in order to bring things into being in the realm of the Spirit. We don't look at the natural. The natural is subject to change, remember. And everything that we're speaking with our faith is in the realm of the Spirit. Also, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Don't ever let unbelief get a hold of you. Believe God's Word. Do not doubt the promises. Believe exactly what He says because His Word is true. He's strong in faith, giving glory to God. Give glory to God. Thanks to God for what He is doing as you are speaking forth His Word and putting your faith in operation. And being fully persuaded that what He promised He was able also to perform. You need to be fully persuaded that what God has promised, that He will perform it in your life. He will bring it to pass. But you can't be doubting. We can't be wavering. You're going to walk by faith. This is the faith that produces and brings results. You can pray the prayer of faith and see every promise. You can use your faith to cast out every demon. You can use your faith to speak to mountains. You can use your faith to resist the enemy, steadfast in the faith, and he will flee from you. Your faith will bring promises into being. Another thing that's important in the New Testament, we are now going to walk after the Spirit. We're not going to walk after the flesh. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. We're going to walk after the Spirit because that is now the way uh, that we are in in the New Testament. We're in, Old Testament was made for man after the flesh. Which, with this thing has changed now. We've come into relationship with Him. We have now the Spirit of Jesus Christ. God's Word now is Spirit, and it's revealed to us by the Holy Spirit who comes to dwell in us. And you and I are to walk after the Spirit, not after the flesh. Remember, what's dwelling in the flesh? Sin's dwelling in the flesh. And you walk after the flesh, you'll walk in sin consistently. God wants you to walk after the Spirit at all times. And in verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Therefore, your focus needs to be on the things of the Spirit. How is your focus on the things of the Spirit? By thinking on what the Word says. Because what is the Word of God? We must understand that the Word of God is spiritual law. It is Spirit. Jesus even said it in John 6:63. 6, it's the Spirit that quickeneth, and the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and their life. They're spiritual words, and they are bringing forth the revelation of His ways, the spiritual law, and they're going to bring life into manifestation. So you and I are now going to walk after the Spirit. And this way of the Spirit is going to bring God's manifestation of his life. It's actually referred to as seeing the newness, this newness of life come into manifestation. Romans 6, 4, we're buried with him by baptism into death. The old one, old us is gone. We got a brand new spirit. That like as Christ is raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, so even so we also should walk in newness of life. Brand new. Now the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. And we can walk after the Spirit, after the way of the newness of life, and see God manifest Himself. One thing's for sure. At the same time in our walk, we do have to put off things that are not of the Lord. It says in Romans, if we look back here in verse 12, 
The night is far spent, chapter 13, verse 12, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. You do have to get rid of some things. Cast off all the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. The armor is called the armor of light here. The word put on is a word enduo in the Greek, which means to clothe yourself, like putting on clothing. This is our responsibility. In fact, this is something that you are to do because this is a middle voice in the Greek. If you're here for the first time. We point out things that are important to understand what's being said. The middle voice means the subject is doing something for his own benefit. And that's why it says put on for your own benefit the armor of light. Otherwise, God's not going to put it on. You're going to put it on through the Word of God in you. And then what are you going to do? We're going to walk. Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting, the reveling, carousal, that's the party spirit, drunkenness, we're not going to walk in any drunkenness, and not in chambering, that's living with someone that you're not married to, wantonness, unbridled lust, not in strife, any kind of contention or strife, he doesn't want that in our lives, or any envying, no, he doesn't want any of those kind of things. We're to walk in the ways of the Lord. And he says, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. The same word, and duo. Clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ through the word. At the same time, he says, make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. You still have the flesh. It isn't, you know, you have this flesh and it has sin dwelling in it and it wants to operate according to its lust, its strong desires. When it talks about make not provision, the word provision actually is a word from the word noe, which means mind. And this really refers to forethought is what the word means. What it literally says then is make no forethought for the flesh. Or as Young's brings it out, for the flesh take no forethought for desires or for any of its lusts. You can't take any forethought to even think about yielding to the lust for a moment, anything of the flesh. We are going to walk after the Spirit. This is why it's absolutely imperative that your mind is focused on the things of the Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. They that are after the flesh, that's where your focus is, that's what you're looking after, that's what you're pursuing after, they're going to mind the things of the flesh. Wherever your mindset is, is what you'll be following after. But they that are after the Spirit, remember, we're now to walk after the Spirit. His mind will be set on the things of the Spirit. And that's the Word of God, because God's Word is Spirit. For to be carnally minded, that's after the flesh, it's death. But to be spiritually minded, that's a Word-ruled mind, thinking on what the Word says, is life and peace. And that's what God wants. He wants you to be blessed by walking in the Spirit. The carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So all those who are in the flesh cannot please God, and they're going to walk in the ways of destruction. They're going to see continual problems occurring in their life. Another thing is, when we walk this walk, remember, we're going to walk after the ways of the Lord. We're not going to walk after the ways of man. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he says, I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes unto Christ. Well, that's the way we are when we first get born again. We've got to learn the ways of the Word, the ways of the Spirit, so we begin to come out of walking after the flesh. I fed you with milk, not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. They hadn't grown up very much. He says, for you are yet carnal. They were still carnal. Why? For whereas there is among you envying, strife, divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? Just as walk as mankind, just like normal human beings. We don't walk as normal human beings. We walk as Christ in us. We walk in heaven's ways. That's why we seek the things above, not the things on the earth. We set our mind on heavenly things, not on earthly things. God wants us to have a, a spiritual mind. So we can't be carnal in envying and strife and divisions and all these things. These things all have to be put away. This is the mark of a carnal Christian. Man, we're not going to do that whatsoever. Instead, you and I are going to walk the walk of the Lord. Another thing that's important in our walk as a Christian, 
We cannot have ourselves yoked together with things that are not of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14 and following. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Are we to have fellowship with unbelievers? No. What fellowship has righteousness, someone who's walking after the ways of the word, with unrighteousness? This actually is a Greek word, anomia. Anomia means lawlessness. Young's really is correct the error, because it's not the word for unrighteousness. It's a different word. It's adakia in the Greek. This is the word anomia, which means lawlessness. So what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? None. Can you and I walk after things that are contrary to God's laws? Absolutely not. What communion or fellowship has light with darkness? You're light, so how can you have fellowship with anybody that's walking in darkness or someone who is abiding in darkness? What concord or agreement has Christ with Belial? Nothing. What agreement have thee that believeth with an infidel? No, you don't want to have any thing to do with infidels. You want to preach the gospel to them and call them to receive Jesus, but that's not who you're going to be having fellowship with. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? None. For you are the temple of the living God. He's come to dwell in us. As God has said, I will dwell in them. But notice, he wants to do more than just dwell in us. He also wants to walk in us. He's come to dwell in us and to walk in us. How does he walk in us? when you and I do what his word says. And what's going to happen? I will be their God. They shall be my people. We're going to be led by the Lord in all the things we do. So what's he say? Wherefore, come out from among them all these things of the lawless ones, the unbelief, the idolatry, all the things that are not of the Lord, and be separate. The word separate means to mark off from others by boundaries. You and I are going to set the boundary. We're not going to cross that boundary. We're going to limit ourselves. We're going to set ourselves apart, mark off from those people that are walking in uncleanness. Be separate, set the boundaries, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I'll receive you. Remember, uncleanness contaminates us. God does not want you to have uncleanness in your life. He wants every one of us to be holy. Remember, the way of the Lord is a way of holiness. And he goes on and says, Then I'll be a father unto you, and you'll be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So God wants to walk in us, and he's going to walk in us as we walk in the ways of the Lord, be obedient. We do have to come out from all uncleanness in our life. And then, of course, we go to possess promises. And how else are we going to be able to walk in the way of the Lord to be holy before him? He says in chapter 7, verse 1, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. You and I have the responsibility to cleanse ourselves. From what? Two things. Filthiness of the flesh and filthiness of the spirit. The filthiness is modifying, is modified by of the flesh and also of the spirit. The filthiness of the flesh are all the works of the flesh. We put away all the deeds of the body. We put off all the works of the flesh. We make sure that we don't yield to any of the fleshly desires, sinful desires that dwell in the flesh. But also there's a filthiness of the spirit. The filthiness of the spirit are all the evil spirits that have come into us, which we have to cast out. That's important. Many people have thought that we don't have evil spirits in us. It's not true. Everyone has evil spirits in us because everybody's sin comes short of the glory of God. We need to cast out all the evil spirits and drive them out of every area of our life. And what's going to be the result when we do these things by walking this walk? We're going to perfect holiness in the fear of God. And that's what God wants. He wants you to come to the place of being holy before the Lord. And that walk that you walk after is going to be that way. Now, as you are walking this walk, you are in the flesh as far as having a physical body. But you are going to fight against enemies not after the flesh. You're going to do it in the realm of the spirit. 2 Corinthians 10, 3, though we walk in the flesh, referring to we have a physical body, we do not war after the flesh. Now we're going to war after the spirit. Now, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not fleshly, but they're mighty, powerful through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You are going to use spiritual weapons against a spiritual enemy to conquer him in your life. 
and you are going to use those weapons of warfare, you aren't going to do anything in the flesh. You're going to operate totally in the spirit, and you're going to conquer the enemy who is the devil with these spiritual weapons. And the power of God will go into operation to conquer everything that is arrayed against you. Now, as we operate in the spirit again, you're going to have to really guard yourself against the flesh because there is a continual battle. Galatians 5, 16 and following says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Again, that tells you the lust of the flesh is always there. Well, we're not going to yield to that. You've got to be ready to mortify the deeds of the body and crucify the flesh daily, the Bible says. You're going to put off these deeds of the body. The flesh lusteth against the Spirit and the spirit against the flesh. They're against each other. So don't think that your feelings, which is the voice of the flesh, is going to come in line with the things of God. Why well, don't feel like getting in the Word today? Why well, don't feel like casting out? I don't feel like witnessing. I don't feel like doing this or that that I should be doing. That's all the flesh leading you. You don't go by your feelings. You go by the Spirit, by the Word of God, doing what God wants you to do. These are contrary the one to the other, so you cannot do the things that you would. So you and I are going to fight against this, and we're not going to yield to this, to anything of the flesh. If we live in the Spirit, which we do, let us also walk in the Spirit. It's interesting, this word walk here is a word, if you notice, it's a word stoikeo down here, which means to proceed in a row as the march of a soldier. It's like we're walking as a soldier in the army of the Lord, following his direct directions. It's really to direct one's life, to walk in his ways. So this isn't just wandering around doing what you want. This is walking in a way of the Lord, in the Spirit, like a soldier in the army of the Lord, following him, following his orders, doing the things that he wants. That's what God wants us to follow after. Again, over in Ephesians, we're told in the New Testament, chapter 2, verse 2, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. The word world here is cosmos. And who's the one who's been running the world? The devil. According to the prince, this means the ruler of the, the word power is the word exousia. It means the ruler of the authority of the air, literally. Who's that? That's the devil. He's been ruling. He's the ruler of the authority of the air. He's been directing the course of this world. That's why you can't have anything to do with the ways of this world. The world is run by the devil. The world system is under the devil. Only that which is following the way of the word of God is going to be right in God's sight. And that's a spirit that works in the children of disobedience. They just walk run by the devil in all the things that they do. And as they do this, it says, Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Notice, there's desires of the flesh and there's desires of the mind. Speaking of a carnal mind that's not been renewed to the Word. This is why getting your mind renewed to the Word is so important. So you can't trust your flesh and you can't trust your mind, just your thoughts, unless it's in line with the Word. Remember, when they were walking after their own thoughts, they were in rebellion. So what's the voice of the flesh? Your feelings. What's all coming out of your carnal, a carnal mind? Just thoughts of what I want to do. So any thoughts or any feelings that are inconsistent with the Word of God is coming from the flesh or from a carnal mind. You can't walk after that. That's the way we used to walk. That is a way that's going to lead you in a path of destruction. We are not going to walk that way. We're going to walk in the way of the Spirit now. And as we walk in the way of the Spirit, you've got to realize God is doing a work in you. Ephesians 2.10 so says, For we are His workmanship. God has begun a good work in us, and He's going to perform that work, that work to the day of Jesus Christ. And we are at work, of course, seeing that accomplished, because we work out our salvation with fear and trembling, obeying the Word of God, seeing God accomplish His purpose in our life. But notice, we're His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained or prepared before that we should walk in them. God wants you to walk in the good works of the Lord. He wants you to do His works. 
He wants you to do the things that He wants you to do for your own life, and He wants you to do the works of God as you reach out and minister to others. Remember, every one of us has a ministry. God wants to use you. Don't think that you cannot be used of the Lord. You can be used of the Lord to preach the gospel to people, to cast out demons, to minister healing to people, to give word of encouragement, to encourage people, counsel people, and as long as you give them the word of God. Remember, never give them your opinion. Only give them the word of God. God wants you and I to be doing the works of the Lord. Because you've got to understand, you and I have a calling of God on our life. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. He says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy. We've got to walk worthy of the vocation. The word vocation means the calling. It's the word klesis. Walk worthy of the calling wherewith you're called. There's a calling of God on our life. We're called so many different things. A general call and also a specific call. We've been called out of darkness into the marvelous light. We've been called to, the, to obtaining the kingdom and the glory of God. There's so many different things that we've been called to. We've got to walk worthy of that. And of course, when you do this, you're going to have these characteristics with all lowliness, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing or holding up one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. And this is what God would have us all to do. So these shows of attitudes. Lowliness means humility. We can't have pride and follow the way of the Lord. Pride is not the way of the Spirit. It is a way of the flesh and of the carnal mind. With meekness, with a, a meekness, this, is, this word actually means a gentleness or a mildness here. Long-suffering towards others. We don't have a short fuse. We don't get upset. We don't get mad, and, you know, but we're long-suffering towards every person. Forbearing or holding up one another in love. We're going to walk in love at all times. God expects us to walk this way. At the same time, again, as we said, we can't walk in the ways of the world. Ephesians 4, 17, he says, This I say, therefore, and testify on the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles, or this would be the, the nations or the multitudes walk, in the vanity of their mind. And the word vanity refers to that which is devoid of truth and appropriateness. In other words, you can't walk contrary to truth or contrary to that which would be appropriate in the sight of the Lord. You've got to walk according to his word. That's what the nations walk. That's what the world walks. That's what everybody walks out there that has not submitted to the Word of God. They're actually devoid of truth of their mind. Why? They don't have the Word in their mind. This is why getting the Word in you is critical if you're going to follow the way of the Lord. Another thing we mentioned, we're to be followers of the Lord in all ways. And it's interesting, Ephesians 5.1 says, Be therefore followers of God as dear children. The word followers is the word mimetes in the Greek, where we get the word mimic. You're mimicking. You're just look, you, look like, you look like God. You're walking like God. You're walking like Jesus. And that's exactly what we should be, doing the same things he did, walking the same path, following him. That's what he wants. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. It is mandatory that we walk in love. When you walk in love, agape love, is a love that realizes the valuableness, the preciousness, and the great worth of every individual. Everybody is important. And God wants you to walk in love towards everybody. You're not going to do any ill will to them. You're going to be not doing evil to them in any way. You're going to be always ministering good things to them that God would have you to minister. And as we walk this walk, we're always going to walk in the light. Verse 8, he says, You were sometimes darkness, but now are in the light. Are you light in the Lord? Walk as children of light. You know, we can't be born again and then walking in darkness. If you have anger, or hatred, or bitterness, you're walking in darkness. If you have unforgiveness, you're walking in darkness. If you're letting the enemy, if you have the works of the flesh, you're walking in darkness. We can't be doing that. We are to walk as children of light. Also, he wants us to walk accurately. It's interesting what it says here. Ephesians 5.15 says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. The word circumspectly, we put the cursor over it, and it means, this word, akribos, means exactly or accurately. God wants you to walk accurately and exactly 
the way God wants, according to his word. Otherwise, not what I think the word says or what, what my opinion or my attitude or my interpretation, no. You walk exactly as the word says. Whatever the word says, you do it. You want to be sure that you, do, you are correct and accurate about what we do. That's why, of course, we take the time to look at all these scriptures and to show you what the words actu actually mean so that we understand exactly how we're to walk. You and I are to walk accurately and exactly. Not as fools. That tells you if we're not walking accurately, we'd be walking as fools whether we, we may not be intending to, but we will be if we're in error. Instead, we need to walk wise. The only way you can walk wise is when you walk the right way, the exact way of the Word of God, and that's absolutely essential. Another thing that we see over in Philippians chapter 3 in the New Testament, he says, Nevertheless, whereto you have already attained, what you've arrived at or attained, this means really where you've arrived at or what you've accomplished where you've come to in the Lord, in, in, in your walk spiritually with Him. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Keep walking by that way. It's the, God's rules, His ways, the laws of the Spirit. Keep minding the same thing. Keep your mind set on it. Otherwise, you don't just walk for a while and then go off in another direction. No, this is the same way we're going to continue throughout our life. And then he goes on and says, Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk as you have us for an example. People that are walking the walk, they're a good example. You want to be in fellowship with people that are walking uprightly and right before the Lord. For many walk, of whom I've told you often, and now tell you even weeping, they're enemies of the cross of Christ. Well, that's a problem. These people are born again, he's talking about, but this is the many who are not following the way of the Lord. They're actually enemies of the cross of Christ. Because the cross of Christ is not just talking about what Jesus did for us. Also, the cross of Christ is to be applied in our life because what are we to do? We're to crucify the flesh daily and put to death all the deeds of the body because everything needs to be put to death that's not of the Lord. He goes on and says, whose end is destruction. And what were they doing? Were they, were they crucifying the flesh? Were they staying away from this, their feelings of the flesh and desires of the mind? No. Their end's destruction. Why? Their God was their belly. Yeah, their, body, their belly was running the show. Whose glories and their shame. And what else were they doing? They were minding earthly things. We can't be minding earthly things. No. We're going to be minding the things above. Because where you're born from above, remember, that's what it means to be born again. For our conversation, or this really means our citizenship. It's a word where you get uh, Paulette Yuma about political type things essentially or civil things that are civil or referring, referring to something that's of a commonwealth and it really means citizenship our citizenship is in the heavens otherwise where are we born from we're born from above you're not of this world any longer you're from above you're a citizen of heaven so how can you walk according to the world if you're a citizen of heaven that doesn't line up how can you walk according to the flesh if you have a changed spirit that's come from heaven? We can't do that. Your citizenship is in heaven now, and you are now to walk this walk. And we cannot be minding earthly things or letting our God be our belly, or we're not walking the right walk. We see something further over in Colossians chapter 1. He talks about our walk, verse 9 and 10. He said, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That means God wants you and I filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's going to be important so you'll walk the walk of the Lord. If you don't have the knowledge of God, if you haven't done what his word says to get spiritual understanding and wisdom, how are you going to follow the way of the Lord? You're not. What's the purpose of having this? That we might walk worthy of the Lord. And that's essential. You are to walk worthy of the Lord and to all pleasing to please Him. When you please God, blessings are going to come upon you in your life. He expects us to walk worthy of the Lord. A worthy manner before Him. And if you do so, according to the Word, what's going to happen? You're going to be fruitful in every good work. 
God doesn't cause anything to not fail. You'll be fruitful in everything you do. Increasing in the knowledge of God, because you're going to continually be in the Word, and God continually gives you revelation of the ways of the Lord. Strengthened with all might. This word strengthened with all might. Strengthened is the word dunamo, where we get our word dunami, so it really means to be empowered with all power. This is the word dunamis, which is power. So strengthened or empowered with all power. See, God wants you full of power. Remember those guys in the book of Acts? They were full of power. They were full of wisdom. They were full of faith. They were full of the Holy Spirit. And they were walking in the ways of the Lord. That's what God wants for us. According to His glorious power, or the power, manifest power of His glory, is really what it says literally in the Greek. Otherwise, the power of God is to be manifest, and that is the glory of God. God's going to show up and manifest Himself. Unto patience, which is steadfastness, and long-suffering in the face of circumstances until your faith produces results with joyfulness. We're going to do everything with joyfulness. We do it with joyfulness because joy protects your faith. We talked about all these things. Joy is so important. If you allow yourself to get down, depressed, sorrow, sadness, you're going to sink real quick. Your soul is going to get all in bondage from the enemy and you're not going to walk in victory in the way of the Lord. We should always have the joy of the Lord because our eyes are upon Him and what He's done for us. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. As you therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, I got born again, so walk ye in Him. Many Christians, they just get born again and they continue to walk in the ways of the world. You can't do that. You get born again, now you're to walk in Him. And how are you going to walk in Him? Rooted and built up in Him because of the Word in you established in the faith, as you've been taught, abounding there and with thanksgiving. You're going to be continually giving thanks and taking hold of the promises. See, once you come into Christ, you have all the promises of God given to you. You've already been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. You now have the means to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, make a demand to what's due you, and believe you take hold of all the promises with thanksgiving and see Him come into manifestation when you pray accurately and effectively, as we've talked about. That's why we should be abounding with thanksgiving. We don't operate in the flesh. We operate in the spirit. We take hold of every promise. We speak them into being. So we pray the word of God, and God will bring these things to pass. At the same time, we do, as we mentioned, Colossians goes on and says, you do have to get rid of some things. Colossians 3, 5, mortify. Mortify means put to death. You are going to put to death. Otherwise, I'm not going to let this operate in me at all. Your members which are upon the earth, the things that your members would like to do. Fornication. No way. You put fornication to death forever. Uncleanness. Anything that's unclean, we put it to death. We have nothing to do with it. Inordinate affection. This is some kind of any evil attitudes of the mind. Of these kind of things like this. Evil, evil deeds in some way. Evil concupiscence. This is longing for something that's forbidden. <laughs> well, that's not something that God wants you to be thinking about or longing for. That, that's bad. Covetousness, greediness. These things all need to be put to death. We're not going to be greedy. It's idolatry, he says. And he goes on, he says, For which things sake the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. Wrath comes on them. Oh, we can't be doing those things. We've got to put off all these things. In the which you also walked some time when you lived in them. Well, we used to walk in them. But now, he says, you put off all these. More of the works of the flesh. Get rid of the anger, wrath, malice, that's ill will, blasphemy, any kind of slander, evil speech, filthy communication out of your mouth, that's obscene speech or anything. We should never have profanity or any kind of these kind of profane words coming out of our mouth. That's all filthiness in the sight of the Lord. Lie not one to another. Man, we're going we're to tell the truth. We're not going to tell lies. You put off the old man with his deeds. And what do you do? You put on the new man. How? By being renewed in knowledge. Precise, correct knowledge, remember, so we walk accurately, exactly according to the word. You're being renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. He's coming. He's going to manifest himself in you through the renewal of your mind. That's what God wants for us. At the same time, as we do walk in this walk, 
How are you going to walk in dealing with other people? Colossians 4, 5 says, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Talking about those people that are not in the Lord. It's interesting. It means really without or out of doors. Those people that haven't come into relationship with God through being born again. Walk in wisdom toward those that are without. Redeeming the time. Have wisdom. Don't let people be time wasters. Don't let people out there take, draw you in the wrong directions and waste your time or waste your efforts. No, make sure you're doing the things that the Lord wants you to do. In fact, we need to learn to redeem our time. That means really watch your time. Your time is important. Your time is precious. You need to use your time wisely. Use it so it'll be productive for the things of God. Put your mouth in operation, your mind, your, your, all your, your, put your hands to, everything that you, you are doing in life. Make sure it's counting. Don't waste your time. You want to walk the things of the, the ways of the Lord. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 talks further about this walking worthy before the Lord. And he says this, that you would walk worthy of God who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. Why do you need to walk this walk correctly? Because of what God's called you to. He's called you to the kingdom. That's important. Not only now, but in the life to come. You see, we're training for reigning in the life to come. And whatever you do in this life is going to determine your status in the millennial reign period of Jesus Christ. You make, better make sure that you're walking where the Lord, so you are going to be able to see that place that he has for you. You want, to hear, you want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter the joy of the Lord. Have authority over five cities or ten cities or over this or that. Well, that sounds great. That's because we've done what we're supposed to do in this life. You're to walk worthy of God and you're called to a kingdom, his kingdom and the glory, which is the manifest presence of God. Now that'll manifest in this life, God's rule and reign, which is the kingdom, and the manifest presence of God, but also, of course, in the life to come. So your walk is very important in your life. God's taking note of it. 1 Thessalonians 4.1, he says, Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as you received of us how you ought to walk. It's interesting, the word ought. It is a Greek word, die, which means necessary. Or more literally, if you look it up in Strong's, it says necessary as binding. It's a, really a covenant word. So he's saying, as you received of us, how you uh, are as necessary as binding. And this particular word is actually translated must, and it's a better way to translate it. Of the 106 uses, it's translated must 58 times. That's what it's saying. Otherwise, it's not ought. Ought in our language today is ought to, like it's a good idea, I should do it, you know. Well, that's not what it is in the Greek. That's not what this word says. It says it's necessary as binding. It, you must. It's a straightforward statement. It's not a, a nice throw out what you ought to do. Now, that's, forget that. Must. How you must walk and please God so that you would abound more and more. Well, that's quite a statement. Not as only as God told us many things to walk after, but now he's saying, this is the way you must walk and please God. Otherwise, if you're really following the Lord, you must walk this walk. You can't walk you any way you want. And then he goes on and he says, for you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. What's the way we must walk? The way of the New Testament commandments. Following his commandments, being obedient in all the things that he tells us to do. Down in verse 12, he says that you may walk honestly, decently toward them that are without and that you may have lack of nothing. God always wants you to walk in a right way towards everybody. Even to those people that are without, walk uh, in, a, in a way that's properly or becomingly as Young's brings it out. And these things are important because your walk is, is very important. Now what about people that are not walking right? What do we do about that, that are Christians? 2 Thessalonians 3, 6. Now we command you, brethren. This is not a suggestion. This is not a nice thought for you to consider and decide whether I want to do it or not. No. We command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves hmm, from every brother, that's talking about a Christian, 
Because remember, people out there in the world, you don't have fellowship with them, you preach the gospel to them. That's not who you're going to buddy around with. Now we're talking about people in the church. You withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly. Disorderly means out of ranks. He's not walking according to the word. He's not walking in the spirit. He's running around on the flesh. He's not walking in the ways of the Lord. And not after the tradition which you've received of us, of course, which is the word of God. Therefore, we are to make sure that we're, we can't compromise, see? We can't be compromising because of people. In this case, oh, a brother. Oh, it's a friend or someone I know, you know. Well, if they're not walking right and they turn away from the ways of the Lord, you are commanded to withdraw yourself from those who are walking disorderly. There cannot be compromise whatsoever. Down in verse 11. For we hear that there's some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy buddies. Now, this is someone who could be working, but is not working, being a busy buddy, you know, just all these other things that they shouldn't be doing. Now, if you don't need to work because of your finances that are such, and you can do all these other things with the Lord, great. We're not talking about that. We're talking about someone who should be working, but they're just being a busy buddy. You know, getting in people's affairs and things like that. You know, one of the biggest things that's come in the scene in the recent times that people can be a busybody is being on Facebook forever and looking at everybody's business, you know. You could be on it for hours. <laughs> don't, you know, I mean, it's a good thing to keep track of what's going on in people's lives, but don't be one of those that's on it for hours on Facebook, you know. The Internet can be a great thing and a lot of good things, but you, you, you can... You can spend hours wasting your time on a whole lot of things that are fruitless. Now, don't let this happen. You know, it used to be people were on the phone all the time talking forever, you know. Now it's on Facebook or whatever all the time, you know, or texting forever, you know. You know, 500 texts, you know, a month or something all the time. Well, if it's necessary, good. But if it's just you just carrying on, you know, that's kind of a busy buddy thing. Is that really a good use of your time? I mean, use it, use it, use all these things for, they're valuable and helpful to use all these tools, but just don't let yourself be a busybody and a time, these things be a time waster. Over in 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, of the nations, when we walked in lasciviousness, unbridled lust, hmm? It's amazing how many Christians have fallen into lustful things. God wants you to get yourself under control. Don't let lustful things get a hold of you. It will take you down a destructive path. Exce uh, lust, cravings, excessive wine, drunkenness. He doesn't want to be drunken at all. Revelings, that's the party spirit. Banquetings, carousing around abominable idolatries. These are the things were happening. It was happening back then. It's still happening today, unfortunately. For they think it not strange that they run not with them to the same excessive riot, speaking evil of you. Otherwise, they think it's strange that you don't run with them. Hey, what's wrong with you? You don't run with me in the world and do all these partying and all these things and everybody else, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. They're going to speak evil of you because you aren't going to do that stuff anymore. You're done with that. You, you have nothing to do with that whatsoever. we got to stay away from anything that is evil. Do not compromise. Do not compromise when you come around times of holidays with family members. It's a mistake. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Notice, the devil is walking about actively trying to get to you. And what's he seeking to do? Devour you. Hey, the devil's coming to destroy. It's not just a temptation that won't be a big deal. No, he's going to try to destroy you, take you down a path of destruction, cause you to turn away from the ways of the Lord. And it's amazing how people are walking in the ways of the Lord and <coughs> excuse me, all of a sudden they get off track and seem like they're way over here. They have a hard time getting back. And don't let yourself get off track. You've got to guard yourself against the enemy's attacks to try to devour you or bring destruction. He warns him a lot of things. Here's 2 Peter chapter 2, over in verse 10. 
he's getting after these guys again. It says, chiefly, those that walk after the flesh and the lust of uncleanness despise government. This means they think little of, is what the word means, of dominion or lordship, is what this word means. Otherwise, they think little of someone's dominion or lordship over them. Otherwise, nobody's lord over me. I'm going to do what I want. Now, that doesn't work. If Jesus is Lord, he's not Lord just, oh, I got my born again, I got a ticket to heaven, great. Now I can live my life and do what I want. That's what a lot of people do out there. No, he's to be Lord of all. If, he's, if you despise or think little of his lordship or gruel over your life, are you really submitted to him? No, we cannot be that way. He must be Lord. We must put him first place and walk in his ways. What's their problem? presumptuous are they? They're self-willed. I want to please myself. I want to do what I want to do. I'm looking for what I want to do. What pleases me? What makes me feel good? All these things. We are to deny ourselves. Remember what Jesus said, the one who comes after him, the first thing he said was, deny yourself. Take up your cross daily, crucify the flesh, and follow me. That's what we do. We deny ourselves. And they weren't even afraid to speak evil of dignities. They just give their which means their opinions, whatever they want to do, you know, their own, own attitudes. And these one were speaking evil things they understood not, utterly perishing their corruption, just speaking all kinds of things that they have no business doing. And they end up getting the reward of unrighteousness. You know, there is a reward for righteousness. There's also a reward for unrighteousness, which is walking in the ways of sin. Oh, they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. See, they were in fellowship with him. And he's saying, you can't have these kind of people in fellowship with you. There's a problem. No. Spots and blemishes. Are spots and blemishes going to be presented to Jesus? No. Who's going to be presented to Jesus? Holy, without spot, without blemish unrebukable, unreprovable, that are walking in the Lord. We cannot have these kinds of things. In fact, we'll find there's a lot of people out there. You see this more and more among Christians. as You see people compromising and walking in wrong ways. They're walking after their own lusts. Second Peter 3, 3 says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers and those walking after their own lusts. Whatever I want. Again, without denying ourselves and putting the Word of God first place, there are problems. God wants us to walk in the light. 1 John 1, 7, we're going to walk in the light. If we walk in the light as He's in the light, that'd be according to the Word, then we have fellowship one with another. The blood of Jesus Christ's Son cleanses us from all sin. We stay cleansed from all sin. And this is who we're going to have fellowship with. You can't have fellowship with someone that's not walking right. Well, I've, they're my friend or they're somebody I've known for a long time. Well, sorry. We're not going to have fellowship one with another and be right and be cleansed from all sin if we're walking with those that are not right. Chapter 2, verse 6, look what it says. He that saith he abideth in him, oh, I abide in the Lord, ought... He owes it to himself also to walk even as he walked. If I say I'm in Christ, then I am supposed to be walking like him to show forth the fact that I'm really in Christ. Verse 11, He that hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness. Know not whither he goeth because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Can we ever have anger or hatred or unforgiveness? No. We cannot have hatred whatsoever. Do not let these things get a hold of you. This puts you in darkness. What does he want instead? He wants us to walk in the truth. 2 John, verse 4. I greatly rejoice that I found of the children walking in truth as we received the commandment from the Father. That's what God wants. We're going to walk in truth. If it's not in line with the word, in line with the truth, do not walk in it. If it's a lie, if it's error, if it's of the world, if it's of the flesh, if it's sin, stay away from it. It's going to lead you down a path of destruction. Verse 6, this is love. What is love? Love is walking in love toward others, but it's more than that. Loving God as well. And what is love overall? Here is a good definition. This is love that we walk after His commandments. 
If you walk after his commandments, then you're going to walk in love. And that's what he wants. He wants us to put the Word of God first place in our life. And that is absolutely, absolutely essential. Now in Revelation, in chapter 3, interesting what it says here. He says in verse 1, he says, I know thy works. Each one, he said, I know thy works to each one of those, those churches. Thou hast a name that thou livest and are dead. Well, that'd be like a Christian in name only, wouldn't it? He lives a name, he says he's a name, but he's dead because he's not really walking in the way of the Lord. He just is, he's just declaring he's something. You see, your walk counts. God's looking at your walk. Be watchful and strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die. For I've not found thy works perfect. This is not the word perfect in the Greek. It is the word fulfilled. To make full, to fill up, or to be fulfilled. This is why Young's corrects it. We point this out not to be putting down the King James or any translation. We put it out so you see the truth. I've not found thy works fulfilled before God. How are our works fulfilled when we've done what he says, working out our own salvation to, and to accomplish the things that God wants and, and see the holiness of God and the work of God be accomplished in our life? And then he goes on and says, Remember where you received and heard and hold fast and repent. If you shall not watch, I'll come on thee as a thief, and you won't know what hour I'll come upon thee. <laughs> Otherwise, some judgment was going to come upon him. And then he says, I have, Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. What does that tell you? If we're walking in sin, we've defiled ourselves. Remember what it talks about? That will come back here in a second. But over in Jude, verse 23, when he talks about hating even the garment spotted by the flesh, you're spotted. Well, whoa, that means I'm, I'm not right anymore. I'm unclean if I'm walking after the ways of the flesh. God does not want us to walk after the ways of the flesh. Your walk is very important to the Lord. Have not defiled their garments. They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. And that's what we want. Who are the ones who are going to be with the Lord? The ones who are walking in white, that are worthy. They're walking in His ways. They haven't defiled their garments. Don't defile yourself. Get rid of all the defilement. Get all the uncleanness out. Get everything out of your life that's not of the Lord. It's so important. In fact, it's interesting what it says. Revelation 21, verse 24. The nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. There will be nations that are saved. And it's interesting what it says here. When it says are saved, you'd think that's a past tense verb. It's not. It's a present tense participle in the Greek. The way you would translate this literally is the nations of them which are being saved, showing the ongoing process of it, shall walk in the light of it. Why are they being saved? Because they've been walking in line with the word. Nations. That's why we pray for our nation to come to the place of repentance, get restored to righteousness. We, you know, we're, when you and I are part of the holy nation, but we want our nation, as this nation, also to come back to righteousness. That's why you continually pray for it and to call people to repentance, encourage them to walk in the way of the Lord. The nations of them which are being saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And it came from the Lord because they've been walking in the way of God, in the ways of the Lord. That's what we want. This is so important. These nations, there's be nations that are going to be turned into hell. Remember, the ones that forget God are turned into hell, while the ones that are being saved, they're going to bring their glory and honor into it because they are walking in the light. One last scripture. God wants us to walk in the truth. 3 John, verse 3, I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that's in thee, that's because the word's in you, even as thou walkest in the truth, that's how it's, you are, it's going to stay in you, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. God has no greater joy than to hear the fact that you and I walk in truth. So your walk counts. Because what is your walk? 
That's your track record. That shows what you're really following. I and mean, that shows who you are, doesn't it? It's like he talks about your walk and he talks about your works. Your works are your actions that show your walk. And that's why he says to everyone, I know your works, I know your works, and I see what you're, how you're walking. That shows who you, you, you and I, who you and I are, really. You can't say one thing and then go walk in another way. That makes you a hypocrite. No, we can't be that way. Your walk shows the real deal before God. That's why he's watching our walk. And as he said, remember, he'll withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly. Make sure that you're going to walk the walk of the Lord in all of these areas. So what have we seen? We've seen that you and I, we're to walk in the light. We're to walk in the fear of the Lord. We're to walk in faith. We're going to walk in this newness of life. We're going to walk after the spirit, not after the flesh. We're going to not touch any unclean things. We're not going to walk in carnality as mere men. We're not going to walk with our mind on things of, of the desires of the carnal mind or the flesh. We're not going to be hypocritical in any way. We're going to walk in good works. We're not going to walk after the course of this world. We're going to walk in love. We're going to walk as worthy of the Lord, being fruitful in every good work. We're going to walk according to the word. We're not going to walk in lustful ways. We're putting off all the works of the flesh. We're not going to be an enemy of the cross of Christ. We're not going to be mining earthly things. We're going to walk in wisdom. We're going to walk worthy of those who are called to the kingdom and to the glory of God. We're going to walk in love after the commandments of God. We're going to walk undefiled. We're going to be clothed with the garments of God. We're going to walk in His ways. We put on His garments. We put on the armor. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to walk in the truth. And that is going to bring great joy to the Lord. Say this to me. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the Word of God that reveals the walk that I must have as a born-again Christian. I will walk in line with your Word in all of these ways. And I will not walk in the things that it declares that I am to stay away from. I refuse to allow myself to walk in the flesh or in the ways of the world or from a carnal mind. I will walk after the Spirit according to the Word of God, doing all that you tell me to do after your commandments. And I will get rid of all uncleanness out of my life. I will walk undefiled. I will walk in the truth. And I will bring you great joy and I thank you as I walk the walk. That shows you who I really am. And as I walk uprightly, you will withhold no good thing from me and my life. I thank you. As I walk, you will bring your blessings and your promises to pass in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Your walk is so important. Many have the talk, but they don't have the walk, do they? The walk really counts. Anybody can say the talk. We don't want to be one of those Christians in name only. You know, well, you say you're a Christian, but look what you're doing over here. Look at your walk. Or what, what do you say in that for? Or why are you doing those things? What are you involved in that for? Why are you fellowshipping with that person? I thought you were a Christian, you know. What do you do with the things of the world? On and on and on. See? Make sure that you're the real deal, the real genuine walk, and it's all seen by our walk. Father, we thank you and praise you for your word this day. We receive your word. We will walk as we must, according to the word of God, and we will show forth that we are walking in truth, and you will have great joy, and great blessings will come upon us in our life, and not only will we see him in this life, but also in the life to come. Father, we thank you and praise you that we commit to walk this walk, the way of holiness, all the days of our life. In Jesus' name.